Hey guys, and welcome back. So it's another day, and uh, we got uh, some more work to get done on this motor. But I figured I'd take a second and uh, address some of the comments. And I appreciate, again, uh, all the comments that uh, people were adding on the last video because I asked people what they thought about the pace and the speed and uh, uh, and the processing of what the videos were and that for I'd say 90% kind of like them just like they are a couple of people said a little faster a couple of people said a little slower and uh, again unfortunately that's kind of the problem when you're trying to um, deal with an audience that has all different levels of what they're looking at so uh, took everything into advisement I'll just say that some of the uh, comments were um, I'll, I'll address right away was why didn't you run a tap down through the stud holes before you put the studs back in well they are blind holes in other words they do not go through so if you look at the bottom of that stud it doesn't go all the way through I'll show you on this one they're blind doesn't go in an oil galley doesn't do anything so uh, unless there was any kind of damage in those where they, if they were those holes were rusty or they had some uh you know gummed up threads or galled up threads i really don't want to do that i do not want the stud being loose in there you actually want a tight fit and sometimes if you run a tap you know you'll end up running a bottoming tap on that because it is a blind hole that uh, I just don't want those to be to the point where they can actually be loose. You want to be able to crank those down there and have them stay. So when you're torquing down the cylinder head, you want this not turning. You don't want the stud turning. So that's why I did not do that. Someone said, why did you put the studs in before you uh, put the uh, liners back in and the pistons in? I put them in just because uh, they were on the bench and I was just trying to get some of the crap back uh, as you can see, it's almost full of space, you know, uh, working room is getting a little small. So I kind of just wanted to gather some of the stuff that I could put back on uh, right away and do that while I was waiting for other stuff. Realistically, if I had all the parts with me, I definitely probably would have waited and assembled it differently. But because I am waiting on components, I just felt like putting them on. Having to work around, people say you have to work around them when you're putting the, the rings and stuff on them. Hey, again, worst case scenario. I can take them out, but uh, I don't think I'll, I'll have any issue with that. But getting back to running the tap through the uh, different parts on the on the engine, uh, yeah, I could do that, and I will do that as far as like these areas, like where you're putting a timing cover on and stuff. I definitely like to put a tap in a drill and just kind of run them in and run them out, and just to kind of chase the threads and clean the crap out of them, and then hit them with the air gun afterwards. Someone was saying, uh, "Why didn't you boil the block?" And you know, you should have done all that. This is middle of winter here. It's not e uh, something that's easily accomplished to do. And to be honest, this engine is not very dirty. It's not um, something that sat out for a long period of time or was a blown motor or you know caked up with a bunch of crap in the bottom of it. It's really fairly clean. So I don't see the benefit as far as how much time it would go to do that in the middle of winter and get something set up to go do that or bring it someplace to go and have it done. Um, I think I was able to, to clean it quite well for uh, sitting here in the garage. But again, like I said, uh, if it was summertime, I at least would have taken the pressure washer to it and tried to, to knock off just a little bit of the, uh, the colored rust. Um, there's nothing scaly or anything on the inside of it that you can see where it's rust color, where the water jacket part of stuff is, where the oil is, is was fine. So, all right, well, let's get into starting to fix some stuff. So I think we should uh, jump into the oil pump and we'll see what uh, the inside of that looks like. Looks pretty clean. Looks like I should have had a gasket on there rather than this though, huh? I think there's pieces of a gasket there, I'm not sure. There's something right there. Let's see if we can pull up on those gears. One of them should just be floating. 
I'm just looking in between. I'm looking for any kind of scarring or anything in between here. It looks pretty good. Make sure there's not a top and a bottom. I may have to take the gear off the other end. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that lifts up or not. Let me play with that a little bit see how it is to come out of there. I just lifted that spring out. You didn't miss anything. Um, I believe that's going to be for pressure or it's going to be just a check valve so it doesn't backflow. That does not seem like... Once you come out of there, what is it, quarter inch? No. So I do not want to damage this thing more than I am helping it. The other end, too, and you see right there, is there's a pin drawn in. Yeah, focus. It's focusing on everything behind it. There's a pin driving right through that. And then you would lift that whole rod probably right out of the center, it looks like. I'm going to try tapping on that pin. If that does not come out, I am not going to disassemble that. Because again, I'm trying not to damage stuff that's been together for 76 years. It would be nice if we could just take it apart and kind of clean in between there. Just make sure there's no issues. But um, I also don't want to hurt anything either. I'm not giving it that much hope that it's going to move, but let's give it a shot. I wish I had a set of brass jaws to set that against, instead of the rag. Try from the other side a little bit. If it doesn't go then, then I think we are going to leave it alone. I think it's moving. moving well, I'm taking it away I got a magnifying glass over here I'm just looking at real quick I think I need to go a little smaller on my punch I think I'm uh, might be hitting the edges let's go with you this might be too small and it's already bent I gotta tap that out of the center of it too because it's uh, it's keyed right there. So I'm gonna get set up to do that. Let's see if we can drive that out of there. Looks like it's moving a little. I don't want to crush that guy neither. So I'm going to work on that for a little bit and see if you can get that tapped out of there and we'll take her apart. Let's see if this is a little bit better way to go about doing that.
just don't want to lose the key that's in there. Here's the key. Will that come right out of there? Of course not. Give that a little tap, see if it'll move. Don't want to drive it that way because I don't want to mess up the surface that it rides on. Let me see if I can grab that with a pair of good old vice grips. See if I can lift straight up on it. So close, but you get so far. I think it moved. Get under it with something. Remember, never use a screwdriver as a pry bar or a chisel. I'd like to have tapped it the other way, but I couldn't get underneath it. Launch it across the room. Now I should be able to grab it with ice grips. Slide that guy right out of there, hopefully. No burrs on that. And there we go. Shaft feels pretty wore out right there. See what I'm talking about? Right there. So I was kind of hoping I could take it apart and flip the shaft over. Here's the underneath there is where the damage is. So I kind of push the gear down out of the way. It's got the same key that it does on the other end, but it does have a um, a uh, keeper that holds it from uh, riding up too far. I mean, nothing says I probably couldn't chuck it in the lathe and cut one on that end, but we have to drill a hole for the other part of it. And then is this going to be an issue on the other side of the pump down there where the gear is? That's on that end. Let's see. That's what I got. That guy would be on the end of it. It looks like it's just going to be riding on the same spot. And yeah, it looks like where the damage is, is still going to be hitting there. Which is going to allow it to come away from the camshaft a little bit. So I think we need to do a little homework to see if we can go and locate one of these. Okay, so I just got off the phone. And I ended up ordering uh, a used pump. It's supposed to be a good used pump in the same place all the other parts have come from. And what we got going here is so we're at zero. We're at a half inch uh, on the main part of the, sh the shaft. And then when I come up into this area, we're at like uh, 470. So it's like 30 thou of uh, damage that's missing from there. And not only the fact that it's it's damage it's missing it's it's how rough that surface is too it's almost like the uh the case is kind of chew, uh, chewing it up i don't really see anything down in that board that's an issue but again this engine had bearings that were failing and i'm not a fan of trying to put something that had an oil issue and then finding something that had an issue in the pump and reusing it. I just wouldn't feel comfortable with doing that. So is this set me back on time a little bit? Yes, it is. But again, somebody else is in here with all this silicone and gunk and gum and, you know, kind of 
probably looked at it too and just said, oh, the hell with it. And it may have been what caused the issue uh, that we had with the, uh, the bearings having contaminants in them and, and failing like they did. So that will get mailed out on Monday. It's Friday right now. And uh, uh, it is what it is, right? So let's go, go on to something else. So I think you guys have seen enough of wire wheeling in the last video that I'll spare you on this one. But pretty much before after and clean them up and then brought them over to parts washer and just kind of washed off whatever is uh, up inside them but uh, they are fairly clean they're not very uh, nasty just a little bit of carbon kind of getting on them you see they're fairly new so knock those three out and again i'll spare you the wire wheeling what i'm using is actually my bench grinder and the way this is set up uh, lighting can probably be better is the outer wire wheel is a very fine wire wheel. The one that's in it is more aggressive and that one is even more aggressive than that. So, depends on what I work on. I try to use, start with that, the material's not coming on, then I, I build up to the heavier wheel and then worst case scenario, really rusty crappy stuff gets uh, this stuff used on the outside. So, that's my process. And after a little wire wheeling, that's one of the sleeves cleaned up compared to before, before, after. So, it don't seem like they're too difficult stuff to hone the insides, but Tooth Fairy came by. One of the tractor marks stopped by and uh, he got a delivery. So he's got a new intake slash exhaust manifold along with the riser. And a new front non-busted pulley. Not sure if that's new or used. It might be used and painted. Not sure. Either way, check it out. It's got set screws on it. Hmm. That's different. Rod bearings, main bearings. And these are the big old rings for the jugs down below. And the oil filter with a, a ring for the oil filter. So looking good. We've got all our bits and pieces. Everything except for a, a good oil pump. And uh, that should be here probably in about five or six days. But I think we got plenty to keep us busy till now and then. All right, I gotta clean one of them up. I gotta use a wire wheel on this video in one place, right? Uh, I want you to be able to, when I'm cleaning it up, to hear the difference between when I'm on this one and then when I shift over to that one. You can hear the uh, grit difference, the, um, not grit, I think what the uh, what the name of it is. Kind of like sandpaper though, you know, you got 80 grit, 120 grit, and so on, you're fine, rough. So you can actually hear it when you're doing it. Hopefully the camera picks it up. finish that up without you guys watching. Come on now, a little thumbs up for backlighting. I got a light behind the cylinder. Kind of see if you can help it show a little bit.
some of the better stones they have a adjustable collar on here that you can change the tension of how much spring tension is on here and it'd be adjustable i don't believe this one has that no it doesn't look like it so that's about the end for that one too those stones are shot don't go any more than we hit middle of the middle But the idea of that is just to put a, what's called the crosshatch pattern in it. It generally polishes itself off fairly quickly. But what that does is it actually holds little bits of oil on the sides of the rings to help lubricate it. All right, let's get that out of there. Thanks, Jeff. Set up in the uh, vise here. Got a rag on one end, keep them getting hurt. And then a piece of wood with uh, my favorite vice grips on that side, supporting it. And I want to go start cleaning up some of the mains and the journals on these. And uh, you can kind of see it's got some uh, beat upness to it a little bit in the center. But I figured I'd take a second just to kind of go talk, talk about it. So what's happening with this and what, what we were afraid of is that when I took the crank out, the rod bearings and the main bearings did not look that healthy. They had a, like a lot of, um, this one's not so bad. I just want to use it for an example though. I don't know if you guys can see. Like you got some pitting and like, see that one white, see that speck right there? The material starts, um, of the bearing starts deteriorating on itself and it starts, uh, I call it galling, which is metal getting removed from one section and then welded back on another place. Kind of like when you strip a, a bolt out in a hole or something and it seizes. So anyway, what's happening or I felt was happening was it, it had some rust or something some contaminants inside this and it went through and it kind of did that to it But after opening that oil pump and seeing how much play was inside that thing. I think uh, that might have uh, aided in uh, some of the issues that it's having so uh, I also want to explain just kind of like the idea of how this works and what it does the oil pump pressurizes the oil system and it's got passages in the block that run all over the place and feed different things, mainly the crankshaft and the camshaft. So there'll be a passage and on a main coming here, there's a hole in the main bearing, a hole in the block, so oil can come right into this location. This is spinning. There's a path in the bearing going all the way around. It allows oil to travel around in a circle because this hole won't always line up. You know, if the hole's up here, crankshaft spinning, this hole's constantly changing, going around. But because there's a path in here, it's allowed to have oil at all times, not just when it comes up to the hole, you know what I mean? So that oil leaks out along the side of each one of those uh, bearings, all, all of them does the same thing. It gets pressurized here. This one probably feeds this connecting rod. This one probably feeds this connecting rod. This one feeds this one. and this main feeds this one. But over time, if that gets more and more sloppy, oil pressure is going to drop and uh, keep dropping, dropping, more, show up more in an idle. And what that is, it's, it's being allowed to squeeze out of the sides even faster and faster to the point where, uh, in theory, really, the bearing should really never touch the, can the crankshaft. It actually is always floating on a coating of oil and should not be metal on metal. And having said that, uh, Usually when you get most of a damage to something is when you're starting it up because there's no oil pressure yet Your pump's not spinning and so for a couple of seconds this thing's spinning around dry All the oil is kind of drained out of it and it is touching for a minute So when they say that when you first start something up you're doing most of your damage. That's true It's that's when it's happening other than that one is running It's uh, pretty much, you know, just gliding on the oil that's being pressurized to it, but if it gets too bad over time or you know your bearings start getting uh, worn out just getting sloppy over time now they start getting a little too much play in them and now the oil is just leaking out faster and faster to the point where you, you'll end up not having any oil pressure and it just will get to the point where it's going to either spin that bearing you just spit out all the material it usually gets real tight and then it gets real loose and then you get a rod knock and a rod knock is going to be that play that's inside that circle no longer being able to maintain so it's 
Okay, I just wanted to kind of go over that. So what we are doing is uh, going to clean these up best we can. I'm going to polish them a little bit, put new bearings on them. It's standard size. It's not been um, cut. You can take a crankshaft or uh, whatever bearing surface. You can go under. And what basically what you do is you, you chuck it up in a lathe. What they would do is they would knock down a couple of thou till they get it to where it's um, true again. Actually, they're going to go to a finished size because bearings come say two thou over. Say, and each time you would take that much off of it and you just put a larger bearing up to take up the gap. But uh, we are not doing that. They're standard size. We're just going to polish them the best possible put new bearings in and go. The same thing is uh, true with uh, pistons and cylinders too. You know, you're just like we saw on the jugs over there with, with some scoring in them. So say if this was a fixed, uh, it didn't have sleeves, we would replace the sleeves. Well, if it was just a block, a, a steel block, what you would do is you would bore this out, say 15 thou over, 10 thou over, 30 thou over, and you get that much larger of a piston, you get nice new surface to work with, and then it, the piston and rings is just that much larger to, um, take up the gap and then it's a new surface to work with again. Got some uh, 240 grit. I'm going to kind of start with that. Kind of wet sanding paint in it. I'm really not really trying to take material off. I'm just trying to knock off any of the high spots. I do it so you guys can see. That was pretty good. You get the idea. So I'm going to do that across them all. Then I'm going to come back with a finer after that. So that's pretty much polished up about as best as it's going to get. And uh, probably looking any different on the camera whatsoever. Yeah, I can feel they feel a little bit smoother. Even through the glove. You're feeling through the glove. You can feel it in the glove. Let me drag it across. But we're just trying to get rid of uh, any imperfections that are in it and polish it as best as possible. Last thing I ended up with was using uh, 1500 grit is what I finished in. And uh, just kind of cut that into strips and, and use that with oil to, to work it around. So now it needs a bath. So I'm going to bring in a parts washer and go wash it up. So I think my next step is going to be putting the O-rings in those locations. You see the spot I'm looking at right there with that little groove with the lights right on which is what those guys are going to go in with. And uh, we have some uh, white grease I believe I'm going to use for assembly of that. So I figure we're going to put those in, probably put the uh, sleeves back in while the crank is out. might be a little bit easier. And then we'll uh, deal with uh, changing out the main bearings and cleaning them up and getting the crank ready to drop in. So let me get the uh, O-rings in. Yeah, let's see how this goes. I'm trying to avoid using my headlight because I know it washes out the camera. Some reason I get the feeling that that is too small. That sucks. That's the wrong size. 
I think. Because I can't see a jug. Let's go take one of the old ones here for a second. That does not fit as good as it should. That sucks. Use the old ones over if we have to. Let me, just for shits and giggles, we'll try putting one sleeve in. And we'll see if it just kind of stretches over it or if it just wants to push out of the um, the recess of it. Let me uh, lube her up one more time. Yeah. Clean it. So I got that one started with that seal going around. be okay. I thought that might have been the wrong side, but size, but that may not be true. Let's go do a little inspection on the bottom side there. I think we are okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. I sure hope so. Suck if it's not, huh? Yeah, let's get another one in there. He recommended using white grease just so the jug will help slide over the seal. Help work it over. And we need cylinder number one. Stick my hand down there and kind of work the o ring into the clip. all four of them. I don't see any rubber gaskets sticking out of the bottom side, so I think we're good. That's the problem with doing something for the first time. You, you know, those little questions that you ask yourself. If they're right. It can be costly, right? I think we're good. I think the oil will stay on the oil side and the water should stay on the water side. So let's get, uh, if I can take those uh, main bearing caps out of there, we'll go crack open the new ones and uh, start seating some of that stuff in there and maybe lay that crank in and see how, see how it likes it. So my first uh, sign of uh, issues should have been the taped up, taped up, fingerprinted, beaded up box. Of course I take them out of the box and they are used bearings. Not used much, but somebody put them in something before, judging by all the shit that's in there. And of course, that one. See all the chatter in it. Uh, we're gonna go with it, but just some shit pisses you off, you know? They don't look that bad. But again, I'm not crazy about the fact that it was an open box and you know they tried it in something to see what the play was or measured play. Um, they probably should have kept that for their place when they were working on motors instead of shipping that out retail. Just saying. Just saying. I set up to drop that crank in. Grab that crankshaft. Drop it in the hole. I'm not worried about the cam crank timing quite yet. I just 
I want to fit the cats. I want to see how this feels. What is holding us up in the air? Seating all the way in the end one there. More oil. And we have enough, right? Slops back and forth like an eighth of an inch. Let's um, set up the caps, get the caps with their bearings in, and we'll go tighten them down some, and we'll see if uh, we don't get any drag on that. Let's go drop another one in. And let's see where the... Step is on that side, so we want. What do we want? What do we want? The offset favors one direction. You see the how they're not how the bolt's not in the center. It looks like it goes like that. What do you believe? gonna run them down with the uh, make sure that we still turn good one more try that one and last but not least gotta make the sound effects You know this last this last one has a thrust face on it right there and that's for what your clutch pushes against when you push down on your clutch that lip right there so that the crankshaft doesn't walk to one side end play in VW world It's about uh, eh, two thousand. <laughs> that feels good. Hopefully, the connecting rods are the same way. So uh, the next thing I'm dealing with, I already, when you guys weren't looking, I was screwing with the timing marks. I'm like, well, if I'm gonna go drop it in, let's make sure that uh, our marks are fairly close. And of course, the book talks about two different sets of timing marks. Figures, right? No pictures. I hate when there's no pictures. But it says, make sure on the crank, the crank's only got one dot, so that makes it easy. See how the cam has two right there and then one? But it says when it has one to go with that one. See the plate in there too? Tractor, right? So it says on this model it should be one timing mark and then on a different model probably uses the same camshaft. Oh you got the way zoomed in huh? Oh that might have been BS. Anyway so now my only question is that bottom mark 
doesn't quite look like a very good mark to me. How does it look to you? Almost looks like a, a corroded pit, doesn't it? Where those are nice and defined. So. I think I'm going to go on the old interwebs and just double check to make sure that that is what it's supposed to be. It looks like it'll be one tooth off. Um, if you uh, go that way, you know, it's off by a tooth. But I'm thinking, I am, that I passed it. Hard to see that mark. There we go. And that should be it. But again, just that. What I question is, is just that that dot is kind of crappy looking. <laughs> Lack of better term, because the the pulley's so pitted. You know, it's got pits all over it. And like, is that a pit or is that the actual mark? I'm pretty sure it is. But like, even in, like you look on the, you know, the crank there, you see all the pits on there. So. I'm going to go do a little bit of homework just to make sure. And thanks to the good old internet, save the day. So here's the deal. That's correct. And these two marks should line up to a mark on the uh, distributor drive. So that's it. We're right. And that book sucks because it said nothing about that. It just said use for certain engines use one mark, the other engines use two. But I just wasn't sure if that was an actual mark just because it looks kind of iffy. But now I feel more confident, I do. So, I gotta think about where I left off because I've been gone for a half hour screwing off in the garage, in the, in the house rather. So I decided what to do, go and do next, which is uh, go inside the house and uh, take it easy. It's about eight o'clock. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, I, when I was in there, I was kind of watching and, and reading a couple of the comments and uh, you guys really stepped up to the plate. It was like, uh, 600 comments I think at the time when I go, went and looked at it. You guys are awesome. You really uh, uh, put forth on that one. Everybody seems to, for the most part, like the pace of the, how the video is going. So hopefully I don't screw that up on this one. And uh, someone was asking, did I get the main caps with the block? Yes, they are. They are the ones that came with this block because it would be line board and they would um, need to be the correct caps for those for whatever you know slight offset there is it's you know drilled as one piece so that is the case so again i want to thank everybody for uh, you know taking the time to go ahead and uh, you know, write all those comments and you know the thumbs up and all that kind of stuff really appreciate it and I, i'm glad you enjoy it i know the wire wheel wasn't a uh, apparently not a very big fan not too many people are happy about feeling like they're at the dentist office so we'll try to keep that down to a minimum but uh, again thanks guys i really appreciate it i think uh from here we're going to get into uh putting the pistons and rods in and uh getting that set up i still have to torque the uh the main bearings yet down but uh get that all buttoned up and then we can kind of flip it around and uh we can start assembling the top end and wait on the oil pump but i think we can pretty much put everything but the oil pan on while we're waiting for that. So again, thank you guys. I will catch you on the next video. See ya.